What do you recall from when you first took over the UConn program, just the state of the program, even the facilities you had? If I knew then what I know now, I would have never taken the job. Really? Yeah. Why? Because I was, I, I guess maybe that's not true. I was so desperate to be a head coach that I overlooked everything you would look for in a job today. Like what? If somebody wants to take a job today, what's the first thing they look for? Can we be successful there? Like, I'm not going to take a job that I can't win at. Okay, so what makes you successful? Well, what are our facilities like? You know, what, what's our recruiting base like? What's our support like from the university? If somebody told you bad, 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 why would you take that job? Well, when I came here, what are facilities? Horrible. What's the support for the university? Non-existent. How about fan base? Doesn't exist. Where do you recruit from? Nowhere. Hmm. So, what do you think about that? I want this job really bad. <laughs> <laughs> so you were desperate for a job. You know, you're an assistant coach and you think, all right, I'm going to turn this thing around. And I lied at the interview. You know, I, I, I did everything I could to get the job. How, do you, how good do you think we can be here? And I said, we'll be in the top 20 in four years. Don't worry about it. And they go, really? And I'm like, absolutely. I went home. I'm like, what in God's name am I talking about? It was glorified intramurals. It was intramurals with uniform. That, I'm sure you had them believing, though, when you start off 7-0 and 0 before yeah. then, then you end up going, I think, 5-15 and 15 the rest yeah, of the yeah, way. Yeah, but yeah. You yeah. must have thought you were a genius immediately. What, what were the offices like then? I would say that in my office, which would be a standard office, uh, we had two desks, a couch, and a coffee table. And we had four assistants living in there. And we had two rotary black phones. It's 1985. And we didn't have a secretary. Um, it was truly you know, starting a rock band in your garage. It was, uh, you know, selling sneakers out of the back of your car. But who cares? Like I said, at the time, who cares? So you can't have a conversation on the phone with anybody because there's three other people sitting in your office listening all the time. Who cares? You know, you can't have a recruit come in the office and have your whole staff there because there's no place to sit down. Who cares? We'll figure it out. And... Um, so what, you've got to move out of your locker room when the visiting team comes to play the men because they're going to use your locker room. Or as soon as the season ends, you've got to get out because the softball team has to use it. Who cares? Now, today, you know, God forbid, you know, uh, uh, anything, like, isn't absolutely perfect and the kids have a heart attack. So things have changed a lot. You told some interesting recruiting stories, or you wrote about <laughs> some interesting recruiting stories, one of which, uh, Ann Strother, uh, UConn, you guys got her. But what did Tennessee do in trying to get her? <laughs> Somebody told me about this. I don't, I don't know. Who told, maybe it was she told us. I don't know. But I guess when she got down there, uh, they went to some kind of gathering someplace, either at one of the coaches' houses or somebody. And the, the coaching staff had asked Ann's mom for baby pictures of Ann. So when they got to the coach's house or whatever, all the other kids on the team had T-shirts with Ann's baby pictures on it. And that's, I started laughing and I said, wow, that's a new one. I don't know that I could, I said, Ann, I can't, I can't, can't compare, I, I can't compete with that one. If you go there, I said, that's something you can look forward to. You know, someday you'll have some kid's baby picture on your shirt, and that's, that's good, something good to aspire to. How about uh, the University of Florida, what you heard they did for one recruit? Yeah, they pick somebody up in an Escalade, and there's like four or five Escalades, and they drive the kid, like, through town, like it's, you know, Condoleezza Rice coming to visit or something, you know? And I just have never understood that part. I really haven't. I wonder if today this would be a violation. When we were recruiting Tamika Williams, Said, uh, and she was a little bit of a wise guy, which was fun. Coach, I'm visiting uh, Ohio State. I'm going there for the Ohio State Notre Dame football game or Ohio State USC football game or somebody. I don't know. I said, good. She says, they're sending me a private plane to pick me up. Now, you can't do that anymore, I don't think. You can't have a private plane pick me up. So Ohio State's sending their, their personal plane to go pick up Tamika Williams, who lives in Dayton, to Columbus. Okay. So I wrote her a letter. And I got this envelope about this big, and I bought one of those little wooden airplanes, you know, that fold up. 
and I put it in the envelope and I said, here's the plane that we have. Use it if you want to come here. Um, if not, I understand. Sorry. That's the only plane I got. I just think it's funny what people do to get kids. Yeah.